Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. Today I'm going to talk about the locomotives that pull most trains. You may be surprised to hear this, but most modern locomotives are electric. Recently I was talking about trains to an acquaintance, and I was happy to answer their questions about how they work. This gave me the idea that many people might be a bit vague about how some aspects of locomotives work. On some of our other videos, I went over the early steam locomotives that pulled trains for a very long time. And now before we get some complaints, yes, we do plan to do more on steam locomotives in the future, but today I'm talking about typical modern locomotives that displaced steam haulage. Many folks like you or my acquaintance to whom I was talking might see trains like this go by. They often have many questions on what makes them go. Let's see if I can bring some light to this. In the early decades of the 20th century, as steam was reaching its pinnacle, many in the rail industry believed that steam's successor would be electric trains. In many places, railways did switch from steam directly to electric. Others put their bets on internal combustion engines. This led to a great deal of work on gasoline, other petroleum distillates, and later diesel locomotives. I may have surprised you up front by saying that, other than steam locomotives, the greater part of all locomotives are electric. Some of you are probably saying, now wait a minute Kevin, you just said there were diesel locomotives. And you're right, but even those so-called diesel locomotives are mostly electric. For the most part, all modern locomotives use electric motors to turn their wheels. There were and are a small number of both locomotives and other rail vehicles that use propulsion systems other than electricity, and we will get to those on another day. All right then. Locomotives today and since the early 20th century have been electrically powered, either directly from an outside power source or from an onboard generator, most often a diesel engine. What most people call a diesel locomotive is more correctly described as a diesel electric locomotive. A modern diesel locomotive is actually an electric locomotive that carries its own generating plant inside the same shell. Look at this very simple diagram. A diesel engine turns a generator that generates electricity. A set of controls sends the power to electrically driven traction motors. These motors turn a gear that drives the wheels. The traction motors can also be used to break the locomotive by having the traction motors act as generators. This electricity generated from the motors can then be sent to a set of resistors turning the power into heat which is typically exhausted from the locomotive through a series of vents. This is commonly called dynamic braking. So that's a modern diesel electric, a locomotive that carries a power station with it. Most modern locomotives allow the coupling together of any number of locomotives. Thus, the driver in one unit can operate all the units as if they were one very big engine. This is called multiple unit operation, and it means that when you see a train with two, three, four, or even more locomotives, they are all being controlled by a single person, usually in the lead unit at the head of the train. With modern systems, the person running the train can even operate locomotives that are not physically connected to the controlling unit, but that's a longer story about which we may return in a later episode. Now I would like to take a look at a pure electric locomotive. Look at this diagram. What we call an electric locomotive gets its electricity from an outside power source, typically overhead wire or a third rail. One of the first ever electric locomotives used batteries. Even today this has been done, but batteries are heavy, bulky, slow to recharge and don't carry enough power for extended distances. The best method for electric traction is to have the electricity come from a central power station. So let's look at getting the electricity to the train. Now you could conceivably use a very long extension cord and believe it or not this has been done in some isolated cases, but let's keep that story for another time. Getting back to transmitting the electricity to the locomotive, 
The most common method is the use of an overhead wire. This is by far the most common way mainline electric locomotives get their power. One of the ways to collect that power from the wire is with a pantograph. There are many kinds of pantograph, including single arm and double arm, and a few systems have used very complex arrangements requiring as many as three different pickup arms. Sometimes, instead of a pantograph, engines use a simple trolley pole, as has been used on some electric streetcars. One of the other things a pure electric locomotive can do is use the traction motors for braking just like in a diesel electric locomotive. While pure electrics can vent the heat from regenerative braking like in a diesel electric, others can recover the electricity by pumping power back into the overhead wire. This energy can help other trains on the same system. Let's look at streetcars or mini light rail vehicles. These typically use an overhead wire operating from 600 to 1500 volts direct current. This type of power is more than enough for the light weights and relatively low speeds. Most light rail systems operate at maximum speeds of no more than 100 kilometers per hour and usually much slower than that. For much of the mainline trackage, both in North America and Europe, the overhead wire runs at 25,000 volts using alternating current. There are many reasons why main lines use such a high voltage. One is that it is easy to get from the electric utility grid. Another reason is that mainline locomotives need a lot of power to pull either very heavy loads or very high speed trains. Once again, electric locomotives can also be hooked together in multiple unit operation. However, this does not happen as often because most pure electric locomotives have far higher horsepower ratings than their diesel electric counterparts. There are also a few models of locomotives that use both their own diesel generator and that can also use some other kind of electrical pickup like a third rail. This kind of locomotive uses the third rail electric power in tunnels and then runs its diesel engine in for open air running away from electrified areas. This is done in the underground stations in New York City, for example, and was initially developed due to local laws prohibiting steam locomotives operating in tunnels. We hope this gives you some idea how locomotives work and how they are able to pull and sometimes push their trains along the rails. And as always, we'll see you on the train wherever it gets its power.